गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चात्य देश तारिणे मुखम करोति वाचालम पंगुम लोंगे ते गिरिम यत कृपात महम वंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारिणे परमानंद माधवम श्री चैतन्य ईश्वरम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिवासदि गौर भक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण सो द सिंस द टॉपिक इज अबाउट ड्राइंग पैरेलल्स बिटवीन प्रेयर्स ऑफ थ्री डिवोटीज दैट इज ध्रुव महाराज पृथ्वी महाराज एंड प्रचितास सो फर्स्ट आई विल स्पीक अबाउट दीस प्रेयर्स इन जस्ट and then we'll see what is common in all these prayers and as sadhakas what best can we derive and learn from these prayers so first we will see the prayers of dhruv maharaj i'm just summarizing the prayers so prabhu ji can we go on to the next slide so i have put these prayers in point forms in slides so if you just can go through it so firstly dhruva maharaj addressed the lord as the enlivener of senses so here dhruva maharaj is saying the lord enlivens the senses of all, of his devotees by his internal energy that is swadhamna and his external energy engages others in material activities of sense enjoyment thus things are manifested differently to different people secondly dhruva maharaj says the lord is the only shelter of devotees and he is a shelter of aspirants of liberation and the friend of distressed even lord brahma could understand the universe by the mercy and the knowledge given by the lord third jo maharaj says the foolish have motivated worship so although the lord is like a desire tree and the cause of liberation still foolish people influenced by maya worship the lord for material benediction fourth jo maharaj is saying that the bhakti is superior bliss derived from meditation on the lotus feet of the lord and hearing his glories from his devotee is far beyond brahmanand next dhruva maharaj is saying association of devotees so dhruva maharaj desired for the association of devotees who are pure hearted and engaged in bhakti constantly by drinking the nectar of lord's quality and pastimes one can easily cross the dangerous bhav sagar that is material ocean the next is detachment so dhruva maharaj is saying that those who associate with devotees do not care for material body of springs friends home wealth wife etc next dhruva maharaj is uh, describing the difference between the lord and the jiva so uh, he said the lord is eternally liberated completely pure omniscient supreme soul changeless original original personality the cause of all causes full with six opulences master of three modes stable in intelligence constant seer through chit shakti maintainer of universe and enjoyer of sacrifices whereas jiva can be liberated only by the mercy of the lord jiva is contaminated controlled by modes of material nature jiva has weak intelligence disrupted vision cannot maintain himself and is always dependent on sacrifices next dhruva maharaj offered respects to brahman which is unlimited original blissful and change this and lastly dhruva maharaj said that the transcendental form of the lord and his lotus feet are the highest attainable blessings for all so here dhruva maharaj is actually speaking about garbha daksha vishnu so this was the summary of the prayers of dhruva maharaj now i'll see the next prayers which are prayers by prithu maharaj prabhu ji can you change the slide so after seeing the lord with teary eyes prithu maharaj started offering prayers to the lord so first prithu maharaj said that the lord is kevalya pati who can award liberation however prithu maharaj did not ask for any libra uh, any liberation or any other benediction so what is he asked for prithu maharaj asked million years to hear the glories of the lord coming from the hearts of pure devotees and what happens when somebody hears from the pure devotees this is what uh, prithu maharaj is saying the transcendental vibration from the mouths of great devotees carries the aroma of the saffron dust of lotus feet of the lord by hearing these vibrations the living entity gradually remember their eternal relationship with the lord if one hears the glories of the lord in association of devotees he does not even give up such association unless he is an animal next prithu maharaj is saying that he desired to serve the lotus feet 
even if he had to compete with mother lakshmi for this seva because he feels that he was assured that the lord would take his side and not the side of mother lakshmi as the lord is affectionate to poor and also self sufficient great devotees take shelter of the lord to constantly remember the lord is feet of the lord next prithu maharaj is saying that the allurement offered in the vedas are actually bewildering to the general people who engage in karma life after life and finally prithu maharaj is asking for the benediction so he is asking to award whatever the lord thinks is best for him just like a father acts for the benefit of his son so this was the gist of the prayers of prithu maharaj the next prayers are by the prayers of prachita so prabhu can we go to the next thing so prachitas first glorified the lord by describing his qualities so first they said that the lord can be perceived by material senses he is faster than the mind and words he is all auspicious he relieves material distress makes the material world of duality appear meaningless he creates maintains and annihilates the cosmic manifestation in form of lord brahma lord vishnu and lord shiva the lord is independent of all material influence he takes away all the miseries of his devotees his brain works only to deliver the conditioned souls he is all pervading parmatma the lord is origin of everything his bodily limbs are compared with lord's flower the lord is the killer of all inauspicious things and as super soul he fulfills the desire of all living entities now this was the first part of the prayers of prachitas in the second part they are asking for some benediction so what are they asking first prachitas are asking hearing in association life after life so here they are saying as long as we wander in this world due to our karma which is influenced by the illusory energy or by maya we want the association of devotees who discuss your past times and this is what they want life after life the next they are saying that the pure devotees association is the highest so even a moments of association of pure devotee cannot be compared to being transferred to heavenly planets or even merging into the brahman effulgence in complete liberation next they are saying what is the effect of hearing krishna katha in association so they are saying that first we forget all kinds of material hankering next is we are no longer envious of having any anxiety or fear next they are saying the lord is always present when his devotees are discussing his past times after this prachitas are saying that the devotees of the lord they wander and purify even holy places and they are always pleasing to those who are afraid of material existence next they are saying by a moments of association of lord shiva the prachitas attain the supreme lord and this lord is expert physician capable of treating the incurable disease of material existence finally the prachitas glorified the uh, qualities of the lord once again and conclude their prayers by offering all their spiritual assets and austerities to the lord for his pleasure now if you all have noticed in these slides i have highlighted few text now this uh, text is actually the essence of the prayers of not just three uh, these three devotees but also the devotees of all the devotees of the lord so we'll at least take one one uh, verse from these prayers so prabhu ji can we go to the next slide so first we will take a verse from prayers of dhruva maharaj prabhu ji can we change this slide okay so i have taken this verse uh, 4.9.11 where uh, dhruva maharaj is saying भक्ति मुहु प्रभताम त्वयि मे प्रसंगो भूयाद अनंत महताम अमलास्य नाम येना जसो जसोल बनम उरु व्यासनाम भवाब्दिम नेसि भवद्गुना कथामृत पान मत्तह सो हियर एसेंशियली ध्रुव महाराज इज आस्किंग टू बी ब्लेस्ड विद द एसोसिएशन ऑफ डिवोटीज हु आर भक्ति मुहु प्रभताम त्वयि मे प्रसंगो व्हिच मींस those devotees who are constantly engaged in devotional service and they are amalasinam that means they are completely free from material contamination 
and by associating with such devotees and madly hearing about the pastimes of the lord druva says that we can surely cross cross over the material ocean that is neshe bhavabdim so here we uh, observe that although druva maharaj initially performed austerity to gain material opulences but finally after seeing the lord and blessed by the lord he is asking for the association association of the devotees of the lord which would help him to cross the nations of the material existence now we will see a verse from the prayers of prithu maharaj prabhu ji can we go on to the next yeah changed prithu okay. maharaj yes so here prithu maharaj is saying sa uttam shloka mahan mukh achyuto bhavat padam bhoj sudha श्लोक महान मुख अच्युत टू हियर द ग्लोरीज ऑफ द लॉर्ड कमिंग फ्रॉम द माउथ ऑफ प्योर डिवोटीज एंड वॉट विल हैपन बाय हियरिंग ट्रांसमेंटल वाइब्रेशन from the mouths of these great devotees smritim punar vismrita tatvataha vartmanam so those living entities who have forgot the uh, lord those are forgetful living entities they will gradually remember their eternal relationship with the lord so this is what prithu maharaj is asking now finally the uh, prayers from prayers of prachitas i have taken one shloka prabhu ji next slide so here the prachitas are saying यावत्ते मायया स्पृष्टा भ्राम मा इह कर्म भी तावत भवत प्रसंगानाम संगस्यानो भवे भवे सो प्रचिताज आर हियर सेइंग दैट यावत्ते मायया स्पृष्टा दैट इज आवर कर्म इज कंटामिनेटेड ड्यू टू द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ इल्यूजरी एनर्जी इट इज इन्फ्लुएंस बाय द माया सो भ्राम मा इह कर्म भी एंड बिकॉज़ ऑफ दिस कंटामिनेटेड कर्म वी विल रिमेन इन इन दिस वर्ल्ड but still what are they asking is tavat bhavat prasanga nam sangasya no bhave bhave so uh, they are requesting lord to please award them the association of devotees of the lord that is bhavat uh, prasanga nam who are engaged in singing uh, the glories of the lord and this is what the prachita is asking for birth after birth so just like chaitanya mahaprabhu also teaches us to ask in uh, shikshastakam prayers he says mama janmani janmani swar he says neither ask for any uh, material opulences or even liberation what you should ask for is service to the lord birth after birth and it is possible only when we associate with the devotees and we hear the glories of the uh, the lord so next prachitas are saying say what is the advantage of this kind of association The next verse is Tulya Malave na pi na swargam na punar bhavam Bhagwat Sangi Sangasya Mardya naam kim utashi shaha. So here, uh, Prachitas are saying that even a moment's association with the pure devotee, that is Tulya Malave na pi, and what is what it cannot be compared with is na swargam na punar bhavam. It cannot be compared with being transferred to heavenly planets or even merging into Brahman effulgence. next they are saying bhagavat sangi sangasya martyanam kim utashishah so the mortal living entities who are destined to give up the body and die the material opulences will make no sense but what is the highest benedictions for them is the pure devotees association so this is what prachitas are saying so prabhu ji can we go to the next slide so here we see that all these devotees are earnestly praying to the lord to give them association of his devotees and hearing the glories and pastimes of the lord in their association because not only it is purifying but it is helping us to cross the material ocean of nations it is making us free from fear and anxiety it helps helps us to uh, develop detachment it is reviving our eternal rela- loving relationship with the lord and placing us in our constitutional position of jivere swarupe hoy nitya krishna das also when the glories of the lord are discussed the lord is always present there so can we go to the next slide 
so i'm just uh, quoting one verse here where krishna uh, speaks to narada he says naham tishtami vaikuntha yoginam hridayeshu va tatra tishtami narada yatra gayanti mad bhakta so here krishna says to narad then narad neither i'm in vaikuntha planets nor i'm in the heart of the greatest yogis but where am i i am where my devotees are discussing my glories and the second reference is from the kevalastakam which is very favorite of mine so i've just taken liberty to take this shloka which says hari sada vase tatra yatra bhagavata jana gayanti bhakti bhavena hare naam eva kevalam so here uh, the author says that where does hari uh, hari stays hari stays eternally where the bhagavata jana where the pure devotees are discussing gayanti bhakti bhavena with lot of emotion they are discussing the hari katha that's where the lord is ever presiding so i'm just uh, sharing my uh, realization here that when such exalted devotees like dhruva maharaj prithu maharaj prachitas and many others if they are seeking association of devotees then as sadhakas we should also aspire for the same because often times at least i have experienced this that in presence of devotees we get inspired to perform bhakti sincerely and we are many times saved from falling in material food so with this realization i think i end my presentation here i'm very grateful uh, to pavaneshwar prabhu for taking a lot of efforts and for preaching us the most exalted scripture to us and engaging us in the studies studying the same and i'm also grateful to all the participants here for hearing me and tolerating me for so long please forgive me if i have said anything which was not in line with the scriptures or in by uh, or in line with the teachings of our acharyas over to you prabhu ji uh, for comments correction and rectification no 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 devotees uh, over to the devotees to ask okay. any questions yes. based on the presentation Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna uh, Mataji. Thank you very much, Mataji. Mataji, thank you for your wonderful presentation. It was really nice to hear. Uh, Mataji, just I was trying to understand that uh, this hearing what uh, has been explained in this, how as a sadhaka we can apply in our life, and it it should be only uh, limited to hearing from pure devotees or. Uh, other devotees uh, also we can you know uh, hearing from them also will help us in our sadhana and for growing as a devotee okay so malaki i will give answer as per my understanding uh, you can correct me or prabhu ji can correct me so i remember i myself asking this question to many senior uh, brahmacharis and uh, i was always given this answer that uh, it is not possible for us always to associate with pure devotees so definitely we have to hear from all the devotees but when uh, at times we are not even associating with devotees so at that time what we can do is we can read from books we can read scriptures uh, when we are reading bhagavatam we are associating with devotees when we are reading bhagavad gita we are associating with the lord and arjuna when we are reading prabhupada's book we are also associating with prabhupada and also when we are reading the uh, Uh, books of contemporary acharya we are associating with them so basically hearing is the key like prabhupad always said the first limb of uh, uh, you know bhakti is to hear so it's not necessary that we always hear from pure devotees and uh, from my perspective i find everybody pure but even if suppose if there is some issues with the devotees whatever they are speaking is pure and whatever we are hearing is pure So I guess yeah, hearing should be on and on, on. and I, always it is emphasized that uh, even with our spiritual master, we are not always associating with him. So Vani is important. So we always hear our Guru Maharaj's lectures. So this is how I apply it. I don't know whether it's answering your question. Yeah. Yes, Madhuri. Thank you, Madhuri. Uh, also, I'll add one more point. Uh, if um, Roji allows me, like. uh when we hear from other devotees they have heard from some other pure devotees so it comes through the parampara so um, that way also we can hear from uh, uh, it is like hearing from pure devotees only 
when you hear hearing from them. Absolutely. As I said, whatever they're speaking is pure. The philosophy is pure. That's how it is. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Other devotees have anything to ask? You please, I mean, uh, we are all like a one class, family only. You can ask. This is the time to ask. Yes, Benit Prabhu, please open. Hare Krishna, Mataji, Dalvat Pranam. Pranam Prabhuji, Hare Krishna. Wonderful class, looking for your association. No question. No question. No question. You have to give your association, Prabhu. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, can you please again uh, kind of um, re summarize that? Uh, what is that? Uh, uh, we should learn from these prayers of Canto 4, from these three great personalities who represent the devotees in the mode of passion, in the mode of goodness, in the mode of pure goodness. And uh, what that we learn from these prayers and how we should implement in our day to day devotional practices. Yeah, so uh, basically, Prabhuji, uh, as per my understanding, I, I felt the same that uh, if you see uh, the prayers of all these three devotees, they have glorified the Lord in different manners. Uh, they have said few similar things, few different things also. But the ultimate uh, essence of these three prayers were they were seeking for the association of devotees. Even in case of, like if I, whatever I know little, the Dhruva is a person who who's started austerity in the mode of passion because he want a lot of uh, opulences but uh, towards the end he is asking only the association of devotees only also in case of prachedas they did get angry at one point of time but what they are asking is the association so for me the message is this only that whichever mode you are in uh, even uh, in case of prithu maharaj he is he is the uh, most opulent king and he has performed many sacrifices and Basically, he, he also has to perform activities, which is the activities of mode of uh, Rajoguna. But still, what at the end he is asking is the uh, association of devotees only. Because this is what is the key for advancement in life. Um, I believe uh, it is only way we can progress is by associating uh, with the pure devotees. This is what my understanding is. What inspired them to ask for association of devotees than Lord himself? And how that translates into our daily devotional services. What inspired them? Okay. Uh, well, in case of Dhruva Maharaj, if I would say that uh, after seeing the Lord, like Dhruva realized that what he was asking was, for the, was only for the pieces of glass, but just by seeing the Lord, he was overwhelmed. And that's how he realized that uh, what he was asking, the material opulences had no meanings, but what is most essential is the Lord and his devotees. So this is how Dhruva Maharaj asked for it. And uh, uh, Prithu Maharaj, in case of Prithu Maharaj, he wanted to complete the sacrifices, but ultimately after seeing the Lord, he he's inspired to forgive Indra. And then finally, he's also, I think, uh, realizing that these opulences have no meanings. What is more important is to perfect life Worshipping the Lord. And that's how uh, Prithu Maharaj practiced towards the end of his life. And in case of Prachitas, uh, after associating with Lord Shiva, they, they got inspired that it is Shiva who uh, actually preached them and taught them what is most important is to associate with the devotees. I think this is what I feel their inspiration. I'm not sure. To how we should get inspired by these prayers? Well, at my level, I, I realized the same thing, as I said before, that if these devotees also who are themselves almost or they are pure devotees, still they are asking for the devotees association. That means at our level, which I mean, at my level, I'm not at all purified person. So definitely I can uh, climb the ladder only with the help of the devotees. 
and i've experienced this also as i said in uh, towards the end of my presentation that it is only possible when the devotees inspire us when the devotees tell us to you know uh, when we are accountable to any devotee they they keep on you know reminding us that have you done this uh, have you done your sadhana have you read this much part of your scripture today you know have you heard these many classes like recently yesterday also uh, like uh, my friend she told uh, she told me have you seen kadam kanan maharaj's passing uh, i mean samadhi uh, the whole procedure or everything so i believe devotees only uh, who help us to you know grow further advance in life so i believe that's the key for me yeah yes what you said is also right as actually right a devotee never feels that he has become a devotee he has mm-hmm. become thoroughly purified he has become qualified to go back home back to godhead through all these prayers of canto 4 are the prayers of other devotees throughout the entire bhagavatam even though lord is standing in front of them lord is ready to take them back home back to godhead but a devotee never thinks that he is purified enough or is qualified enough to go back home back to godhead immediately he always uh, seeks for more more and more opportunities to get purified and get uh, opportunity to serve the supreme lord and his wonderful devotees uh, yes. that's why all the devotees seek for the association of devotees it is not only for hearing but it is also for serving them all so, all aspects are included but in any case bhakti begins with shravanam shravanam is a key factor and uh, shravanam uh, implies practice also it mm-hmm. is not only just shravanam when we hear something it is expected that we should also do those things without doing shravanam has no value yes so yes. in that way so it includes all these things so thank you very much for uh, presenting very nicely this particular topic uh, mm-hmm. and um, um hari krishna hari krishna thank you thank you so much thank you everyone hari krishna prabhu ji hari krishna ah yes mataji just wanted to add one shloka um, i please uh, please is, uh, that uh, this entire episode it establishes the supremacy of the lord's devotees he says mm. mat bhakta partha nane bhaktas cha te jana mat bhakta naam cha te bhakta e bhakta te mat bhakta tama mata so the devotees mm. are so um, the, the lord loves his devotees and ultimately for us to to samsiddhir haritoshanam it is it is the proper way that we approach the devotees seek their association and blessings in our spiritual life now that's all Prabhu. yes 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 thank you mataji thank you for adding that yeah thank you mataji so yeah. so now madavi got mataji you can proceed you don't have to perform or do all the formalities you can directly start with your presentation okay uh, hari krishna dhanyavad to prabhu ji and to all the devotees uh, my topic for today's presentation is uh, forgiveness so through the um, while studying the fourth canto we have come across many devotees and we have seen that how they in their life have practiced this quality because this is a very practical topic i felt because uh, we require to put it in the practice uh, in our daily life also every now and then and sometimes uh, if we don't have the philosophical background of it uh, behind um, when we are doing or forgiving somebody then we may uh, develop a kind of ego that yes i was able to forgive somebody or something but when we look into the uh, next project so when we look into the lives of the great devotees uh, like lord shiva and uh, prithu maharaj and bhuva maharaj basically so we'll try to learn from them that how they practice this quality and uh, how what is the philosophical understanding behind that so uh, next problem so in uh, first uh, type of forgiveness is uh, like forgiving with a scar so what it means we'll try to see uh, next project so in the daksha yajna we uh, all studied that uh, daksha being at the level of material level he insulted uh, lord shiva 
uh, feeling that he has not uh, given him honor and forgetting the spiritual uh, at spiritual level lord shiva was much more superior to him and that is why but lord shiva didn't say anything but later lord shiva's associates next probably virbhadra and other associates they uh, destroyed the daksha yajna and things like that and then uh, brahma ji came and met lord shiva in, along with other demigods in kailash next probably so we uh, uh, get lot of insights about this quality of forgiveness from brahma ji's talk uh, with lord shiva where uh, brahma ji explains that materialistic persons are very much attached to body and they are bereft of knowledge of spiritual realization due to which they are always full of anxiety and such people are already killed by the providence so there is no need for anyone to you know take actions against them and as such also in the case of conflict one should not kill the person but try to revive the krishna consciousness of that person out of compassion for said jiva who is entangled in the maya so an explanation so um, brahma ji also said that beauty of a saint is forgiveness which we do see uh, with various examples in the scriptures like how parikshit maharaj uh, forgave the brahmana boy who caused him to die ill death even though um, and then haridas thakur was beaten in 22 market places but he didn't say, uh, take any actions against them or nityananda prabhu forgiving uh, jagai when he actually physically tried to harm him or lord jesus christ uh, when he was crucified so in all these examples we do see that all these personalities were uh, well capable of retaliating to the um, insults whatever was uh, caused to them but still they did not uh, do that but instead they forgive um, the offenders and try to um, uh, help them grow spiritually how we saw in nitananda prabhu is that when jagai uh, he for, not only forgave jagai but he revived the krishna consciousness of jagai so much so that uh, later they become the pure devotees so that is the beauty uh, of uh, tapasvi or saintly personality so vaishnava should take care that all those who are bewildered by maya and uh, without vaishnava's mercy they don't have any go so uh, instead of trying to harm them in any way we should forgive them so that uh, and try to revive their krishna consciousness so uh, next problem so then uh, lord shiva explained his point of view why there was uh, whatever happened the destruction at dakshayarna what was the view point of uh, lord shiva so uh, lord shiva said नागम प्रजेश they will not do such things again so uh, there are two um, next slide for you so there are two kinds of punishments uh, lord shiva explained that uh, one is which the conqueror imposes on the enemy where conqueror is not at all uh, of the view of doing something good to the enemy he wants to harm more and that is why he imposes certain kind of punishment and a second kind of punishment is which father imposes on the son where father is very much in love with the son but also wants that his son to grow actually and that is when if some punishment is given he will remember that and in the future son will not do the mistake so lord shiva explained that with that view point he uh, punished daksha and the other demigods but we also see uh, further that uh, later on lord shiva did um, forgave them and gave the like daksha was given the good head and other demi gods so uh, next one 
So what we learn from all these incidents of um, Daksha Yajna and Lord Shiva for giving Daksha is Lord Shiva agreed to mitigate the punishment and leaving this scar to remind the offenders that they should not be committing this sin again. And uh, also that one should knowing the Supreme Lord's position as ultimate sanctioner and the conditioned soul's position is always they are you know, empowered by Maya. So saintly persons don't take the offenses of materialists very seriously. So that is uh, how we should see the whole incident. Then the next uh, example of uh, um, forgiveness we see in Dhruva Maharaj case, which we can understand as forgiving with gratitude. So Dhruva Maharaj was uh, insulted by his stepmother Suruchi and uh, he was he felt very rejected and insulted both. And he was told by his stepmother that uh, you should take uh, search Lord and pray to him to take uh, birth from her womb and then only he can sit on the throne or on the lap of the king. So, uh, which Dhruva Maharaj took this very seriously and with determination he went to the forest. So then uh, we all know that uh, next one. In forest, we uh, he came across uh, Narad Muni and Narad Muni instructed Dhruva. He tried first to judge Dhruva's determination that this um, uh, advise him to leave the concept of honor and dishonor because he was just a child. And when he can grow up, then he can perform austerities for that cause, like that um, Naradini explained. And, uh, but Dhruva Maharaj was quite determined to do that uh, austerities and to meet the Lord because he was in a very much in passion that he wanted a bigger kingdom than his, even his forefathers. So, uh, next. So, when he met the Lord, uh, next slide. So when he had the darshan of the Lord, uh, this passion, whatever was there in Dhruva Maharaj, it, uh, it all uh, went and uh, darshan of the Lord led him to achieve the perfection of self-realization. He became free from all contaminations due to material modes which were causing problems. So when he came back from the forest after um, achieving uh, the darshan of the Lord and benedictions from the Lord, uh, it, it is very beautifully explained in the words uh, next story, where uh, we see that uh, he explains it is uh, 4.9.45. Where we see that uh, when he came back from the forest, although he was greeted by his father and so many citizens and both his mothers were present, first he offered uh, obeisances to Suruji and then to his own mother. So um, there was no uh, kind of a revengefulness or um, any ill feeling about uh, the mother Suruji in his mind left. So he was completely purified. So when uh, we see that uh, all the animosity has completely melted due to the, um, and his Rajogun also. So uh, by that uh, next Prabhuji, we see uh, in this example that uh, duality due to animosity is the creation of this material world. And there is no such thing in the spiritual world which is the absolute reality. So Dhruva Maharaj had, uh, in fact, he not only forgave Suruchi, but he had gratitude for her. That because she insulted him or because she spoke certain words, which provoked him to perform certain, uh, such a severe austerities and which led him to uh, have darshan of the Lord and uh, darshan of the saintly person like Narad Muni and his life completely changed. So he was in much gratitude. And in further in future also we do see that Dhruva Maharaj future action like when Uttama was killed by uh, Yakshas and uh, he had so much uh, big fight with them. 
so it depict his forgiveness depicted in his actions also it is not it was not only by saying that uh, he was so much attached to his brother and the step so this way we learn from dhruva maharaj example basically that uh, we should not be in the um, particular mood and then um, see the situation painted through that mood but we should see uh, at the level of self realization and the soul is different from the body and that is why from that perspective when we see there is no animosity left and one can forgive easily so that was the learning from gomaraj case and then next so next is prutu maharaj uh, forgiving indra uh, where we learn that uh, when he was performing his sacrifices 100 ashwamedh sacrifices and when he was at the 100 sacrifice indra uh, was became indra became very anxious and he wanted to stop the sacrifice to because he felt threat to his position and he tried to stop that in various way which led seed so the seed for potential disruptions in the society by all pseudo sanyasis and um, becoming pseudo sanyasi and all so then that time a uh, lord appeared and lord was very much pleased when prithu maharaj forgave indra that time also um, prithu maharaj was advised to forgive and not uh, indra was given any advice because we all uh, learned why it was so because uh, prithu maharaj was a greater devotee than indra so philosophical teachings which lord talked with the prithu maharaj are very important uh, in this so uh, next problem yeah so lord say that uh, told that advanced human beings are always aware of the difference between body and soul and so they are never malicious of others understanding that uh, those actions have been performed uh, due to the modes of material nature so um, those who have already become the victims of modes of material nature so they will be performing actions under those moves so one should be aware of that and one should forgive the person then next uh, next slide please so lord also uh, explained this taking reference from the bhagavad gita that uh, 5.14 that na kartutvam na karmani lokasya srujati prabhu na karma phala sanyogam swabhavastu pravartate where he stressed on the point that actions usually are done under the effects of material modes and that is why a uh, decently person or learned person should try to understand it at that level also uh, rupa the explained very nice point in the purport regarding this next slide please so aprapad explained that those who are advanced transcendentalists they are termed as sudhiya so who are the sudhiya person they are intelligent person they are highly advanced in consciousness and they are devotees of the lord so they don't take uh, action against the soul or body so uh, they know that both are separate soul and body and that is why they are never interested to their uh, take action they are ne- they never become envious due to any action per- performed by a particular person because uh, they are aware of the soul and activities of the soul under the influence of material nature basically so uh, next slide so what we basically uh, learn very important points which propad also stressed in the purport is that one who doesn't forgive but wants to retaliate he proves that he himself is also under the influence of material energy so lord advised prithu maharaj to forgive indra considering that indra is a soul separate from his body and therefore is controlled by material nature another important point which i felt a uh, very nice point was that all these condition uh, all those who are conditioned by matter are mad and those react to the actions of a madman 
they are also mad. So Lord, I advise Prithvi Maharaj, which is the advice for us also, that be alive in transcendental consciousness. So if we try to uh, be alive in the transcendental consciousness, then uh, we will not react to a particular situation when somebody insults or when somebody uh, tries to harm us in any way. But we will try to act. So what is the difference between reaction and action? Reaction will be under the uh, effect of modes of material nature. How the word term here is uh, madman reacting to the action of madman. And action will be um, under um, our act, understanding all the philosophical points, what we saw through all these examples, that the modes are active in this person. The soul and body are different and soul under the effect of modes per performs particular action. So essentially, we don't have to react to those. But we can help that person revive his Krishna consciousness so that the effect of modes will reduce and he will not do such things in a further uh, So that is what uh, I, I felt this topic was very important for me because at many point, my reactivity is very high and I do react to certain things or people uh, not only uh, instance but any other things so this that is where I selected also this topic that if i go in depth of it it will help me to uh, nourish my consciousness so thank you all very much for uh, listening to me and thank you Prabhuji, for helping me in you know, preparing the presentation Hare Krishna Hare Krishna thank you Mataji for nice presentation yeah request devotees to ask some questions not that if you have a question you should ask even though you don't have a question just to change the subject more and more you should ask some question Hare Krishna devotees Hare Krishna Madhvi Gopi Madhuji Dhan Pranam Hare Krishna Mataji, uh, as Prabhuji said, it was very nice presentation and came from your heart. So it really was, I mean, even uh, I felt that, yes, we should be practicing it. But um, uh, I would call myself as a product of more of a passion and ignorance. And uh, most of the time uh, influenced by the modes. So uh, at times uh, what happens is when somebody is saying something uh, which is not uh, palatable to me or somebody behaves, uh, sometimes, not always, but sometimes you, uh, I do tend to react. Uh, but later I realize that, oh, I shouldn't have done this, you know. So in this case, uh, uh, I, I feel the taking a pause would have helped. But uh, many times I am able to do it, but at times I'm not able to do it because uh, I'm still identifying myself with the body and I'm not at that platform of, you know, understanding the transcendence. So, uh, would you like say anything about it, which which can help me? Yeah, Hare Krishna. Thank you, Mataji, for such a nice question. This is a very practical question. Uh, it does happen with me also, but uh, in the light with uh, of what we discussed today, I feel that um, when something comes to us, uh, if we take just a pause and try to understand that why somebody is behaving that way whether the person is under the effect of modes or whether he is trying to correct us and that is why he is taking particular action. So if that pause is very important, if we can take that pause, then our intellectual functioning starts and we can analyze the situation. And if we can do that, then we will not react. Maybe if there is a need to uh, you know, act also in that situation. Later on, when uh, we become a little calm down, we can act in that situation more bet better way than immediately acting. Because immediate actions are always under the modes, uh, effect of modes. But uh, when we cool down a little and then act, there is an element of intellect added. And so the action will be better. I think. That's what I can also, I tell myself also we can practice that I, if it helps you in any message yes 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 thank you i'm just adding something that 
uh, what a lot of times I've got answer is this: instead of reacting, or we would choose, we would rather choose to respond. And to uh, you know, responding something, it's better to take a pause and then respond. Reaction can be immediate. Response can be later also. So yeah, thank you so much. It really helped. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Jai Dandwar. Dandwar Pranam. Thank you very much for this nice analysis of this subject. You had mentioned that um, those who do not forgive, they are on the same level as those who those who hurt them. So I just thought of this Prabhupada pastime that we had heard in a class that uh, once Bhakti Tirtha Maharaj in his earlier days. He realized that he was being discriminated against, that there was racial discrimination, discrimination. And he approached Prabhupada one day and he told him, that I'm really sorry to say, but uh, there is discrimination on raci racial basis even among the devotees. So Prabhupada very calmly said, if you are affected by what the people are saying, then there is no difference between you and those who are saying all these things. Very right, that is. Just wanted to mention this past time. Thank you, Madhuri. Thank you for nice sharing. Yeah. Uh, other devotees? Hare Krishna. Uh, thank you very much for taking up this presentation and making it. Uh, you nicely put up the acronym or that one one line uh, caption. Um, forgiveness with scar, forgiveness with gratitude. Hate the sinner, hate the sin, but not the sinner. So very nicely you put the entire pastime in, in the essence of the entire pastime in one line. So one point you were mentioned, you were talking about uh, Sri Larida Stakur and uh, Parishit Maharaj, etc. Et so kindly notice this in the Bhagavatam. So a devotee by nature is Brahmanical. They don't uh, retaliate, they don't revolt. But sometimes we see the two categories of devotees generally being described in the Bhagavatam. Brahmanical devotees and Kshatriya devotees. So when there is some problem with Brahmanas and the Kshatriyas, they don't revolt. The Brahmanas never ever revolt if there is a problem by anyone. That is Brahmanical nature. They are completely by birth. They learn to tolerate everything. But when it comes to Kshatriyas, they tolerate anything that happened from the Brahmanas. But they don't tolerate anything that happens from equal and lower Kshatriyas or other people. They do react. For example, we have Dhruva Maharaj. When his brother was killed by Akshas, he did not. Uh, ah, okay, it's okay. It's nature's act. I, did, I don't have to revolt. Not like that. He went and do the needful. But when he was going overboard, then our Swayambo Manu comes and stops him. That is there. Parikshit Maharaj, if you take the Brahmana by cursed him. So he did not revolt. Because it was from the Brahmana community. So he is a Kshatriya and he did not revolt. Even Arjuna also tells in the Bhagavad Gita, it is better to be killed by Bhishma Drona elders than killing them, even though it is Dharma Yuddha. So this principle of arguiness also, it varies based on where we are. Lord Shiva, punishing Daksha is itself is arguiness, as you rightly mentioned that uh, father. A master punishing the subject and a father punishing the child. So it is like affectionate punishment. It is to teach the lesson. So Lord Shiva's punishment to Daksha is like a father punishing the child. So in that way. That is also full of affection, but there is a necessary action as taken that. So some points connected to this entire uh, presentation. But still, as you mentioned that I wanted to practice this, that's why I had chosen this topic. It is very difficult to practice this principle. It is very, very high uh, standard. 
but we need to keep hearing, keep observing, keep noting down, uh, keep repenting. After 100 times we repent, maybe 100 first time we may act properly. So we are all work in progress. We need to work hard. It is not that easy. We may recite every day, Amanina, Manadina, Kirtaniya, Sadahari, but that is very, very, very difficult. That is the highest standard. If somebody ignores us, somebody disrespects us, somebody spreads rumors about us, criticizes us, it is very difficult to tolerate. Sometimes we may, if they are somebody is elder to us, we may say, okay, okay, no problem. But if somebody is equal to other junior to us, if they do it, we cannot. Because even we, being influenced by three modes, we, we, we cannot ascribe a particular Varna to us. We have all the four Varnas within us. So when something happens like that, our Kshatriya nature comes out immediately and we want to take necessary action immediately. So that is there. It is very difficult to become and remain as a Brahminical. It, it's long, long practice required for that. Some points addition to it, but thank you very much for making this presentation. So. Uh, thank you, yes. thank you so your additions are always really very valuable and uh, very enlightening. So thank you so much. Sorry. Any uh, other devotees want to add anything? Roji, can I ask something in this relation? Yeah, yeah, please ask Mataji, not me. <laughs> no, just now what today you is, said today. in that ah, okay. prediction I wanted to ask. Because you said that uh, when Dhruva, uh, when uh, his brother was killed and then when he started fighting with the Akshas, you said mm -hmm. that it is okay to punish the people lower than uh, what you are. So Brahmana would not punish, but Kshatriya would to the lower mm -hmm. uh, Kshatriya or probably Vaishyas or e equal, equal or lower. Even a Kshatriya also, he did not respond uh, to the elder Kshatriya. Like Arjuna did not respond to, did not want to respond to Vishma and Drona. Yes. Rather he was ready to be killed by them than to kill them. So at our level, Prabhuji, if, if somebody is doing whatsoever, X, Y, Z with us, mm. who am I to decide whether he is superior or inferior or she is superior or inferior? I mean, how can I decide that? No problem. See, from philosophical ground, from whether devotional point of view, they are superior or inferior, don't have to worry. At least from the practical ground, age-wise, they are superior. Achha, so you for the age and... Uh, ah, yes. Uh, yes. Oh. That also we can take. And one more thing I wanted to uh, inform you that even whether it is presenter, whether it is ask uh, the, uh, the person who is asking question, never ever make it a subjective thing. Keep it as an objective. When you want to ask a question that I have this problem, not, we, sh we should never ask question like that. Oh. The I yeah. and you that can come between a counselor and counselor in one-on-one -on -one discussion. In a group discussion, we always speak uh, with reference to a third person. Yes. Keep yourself as a third person. If somebody is going through so and so problem, what would you suggest to come out of that situation? Oh, okay. A question should be framed like that. Okay. Even when we make presentation also, when we give answer also, when somebody is and like this, like this. So this is Bhagavatam, this kind of solution offers Bhagavatam. So we should never ever, uh, I mean, okay, yeah. sometimes it may be okay, but not always. We should not always make it subject to, okay, I have this problem, I go through, I also go through like that, not like that. Yeah, I understood, Prabhuji. In fact, yeah, the subject was such, so I just yeah, got inclined. Yeah. No, no, I'm not telling that you should not ask question. You you portray yourself as a third person and ask the question. Yeah, understood, Prabhuji. That's what. It's, it's, so I should not have said it's, it's me who has this. Yeah. yeah. We can ask such kind of one on one questions only in one, one to one discussion, not in a group discussion. Yes, Prabhuji. Yeah, it is like that. Thank you. Yeah. Now let us move on to yes, Mataji, 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 you want to say something finally? No, uh, no. Prabhuji, I just want. Yeah. Muni, yes, Muni, Mataji, please go ahead. Drugumuni was such a senior Brahmin, but how he cursed in Daksha's case, he cursed all the Brahmins, and he and I just just wanted to mention this that even being a ah, Brahmin, yes. he cursed. Yeah, yes. because. Uh, it was required there. That's why he did it. See, because we are seeing everything from the bhakti point of view. Sometimes we need to see from the Varnashna point of view also. Some necessary corrections needs to be performed in the Varnashna system when it is under uh, uh, 
under action. So when it comes to bhakti, the main principle is tolerance. But when it comes to Varnashrama, the correction is always exercised. So it is like yes. that. Yes. So what, what Daksha did, so Daksha had his own opinion. The, all the Brugu and the, all, they are all brothers of Daksha. That doesn't mean that they are there. The sacrifice is performed not for uh, showcasing Daksha's uh, greatness. The sacrifice is meant for the good of the entire world, mm -hmm. entire universe. Mm -hmm. They are all there. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but, uh, what's mm -hmm. happening here? Um, Nandi became wild and the Brahmana community only. You people are not saying anything. You people are all sub uh, supporting... Uh, Daksha, whether they are supporting or not supporting or they are neutral, we don't know. Hmm. But he started, instead of cursing on uh, Daksha alone, he started cursing on the entire Brahmana community. So, thoda overboard, right? Hmm. Galti kiya Daksha. Hmm. Punishment mil rahe entire Brahmana community ke liye. So, the Brugu became angry. I say, kaise bol sakte ya? So, I, 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 now can you say that whether I am supporting Daksha or I am neutral? Just because I'm not speaking, Maunami Radhangi Karam only, half only, not full acceptance. So one cannot take uh, such kind of hasty steps. So in that way, we can see that. Okay. Yes, Prabhuji, you're right. Thank you. Ultimately, that has to happen. It happened. That this is all because of instantaneous response. Somebody should take time to respond and, and respond appropriately. Then there will be no problem. If somebody responds without analyzing pros and cons instantaneously, it will lead to, if somebody does like this, if, if some, some jagada or a rasape, uh, what people will say, they don't say what kind of person is this. So what kind of parents uh, gave what kind of samskaras to this person? It goes to the parents. There may not be uh, any uh, problem with the parents, but it goes to them. So that, that, that is the problem. Hare Krishna. Mm. Yeah, Prabhuji, I was saying that even it means every Brahmana will not be in the mode of goodness all the time. No, like the Brahmana will also like, sometimes show the actions under mode of passion or like that. Mm. Yes, sir, that mm. is true. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. We should not take all the Brahmanas. I mean, I entire event from the point of your bhakti. We should take it from the point of your. Varnashrama, where correction is always exercised. So in that way. Mm. Varnashrama means people in different modes. So that is default. Understood. Even Thank the Maharaj who killed the, he, he was out to destroy all the Yakshas. Even that was a sudden reaction. Hmm, yeah, yes. But what he can do? If you don't kill them, they will kill him. Abhi marna or marna. Situation is like, when you do it, Dono hmm. But he had one option. He could have just like Arjuna used Samohan Asra to keep everyone under sleep. Something could have done like that. But uh, Durva hastily, Apa Itna Himate Apka, Muja Marna Chat, Lujan Pirate Karke, me Apko Marton Karke, Toda. It became like overboard. Immediately there was a correction by Swayam Bone. Yeah. So yes. it is there. Thank you very much. So it happens in the society, though one may be a devotee. Even Prachet also, you see, they were devotees, they had Darshan of Lord Vishnu immediately, they came out of the water and they saw entire uh, earth is populated by, covered by trees. They became angry. Yes. From one sense, one may ask, hey, devotee, I say, I say angry, ho sakta hai. O devotee plus Sati Sat, or Raja bhi hai. O Raja ka gun nam nahi dek rahe. We should see the quality of the king also. King responds quickly. So it's appropriate in one sense. But where the problem is, they wanted to burn the entire tree race. That is the problem. So then Brahma comes comes and stops. Okay, enough is enough. Both okay. So it's like that. Yes. Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, Prabhuji. Yes, now who will be presenting? Pradeep Nair Prabhu or Lekha Nair Mataji? Quickly, we are late. Ladies first, Prabhuji. Abhi wo first se ladies hi ho raha hai, Prabhuji. Koi hi chal raha hai. Abhi aisa bolega toh, abhi ek din jen nahi milega. Koi bache ga nahi. 
ಅದರ್ಸ್ if one is engaged in advancement of spiritual knowledge that is a sadhaka there will be so many insults dishonors from others one should learn to tolerate all the impediments that come in our life to for uh, practicing our devotional service uh, now why this impediments come the reason uh, given in bhagavad gita where uh, 13th chapter is that the very material nature is such that this has to come even a boy like pralat maharaj who was just 5 year old engaged in cultivation of spiritual knowledge was endangered when his own father became antagonist to his devotion the father tried to kill him in so many ways but pralat maharaj tolerated all the um, uh, all all uh, all the uh, wrong practices uh, put forth from uh, his father and with determination continued his uh, practice i have used acronyms to hari krishna sorry for the okay. i have used acronyms uh, for this tolerance t p is used for trust taksha i i hope uh, i know everybody knows the story so i won't be telling the story of the daksha yagna here daksha should have trusted uh, lord shiva and his intention Lord Shiva was sitting uh, without uh, in the assembly or where the sacrifice was going on, which uh, was uh, arranged by all the uh, saints, all the saints, uh, or all the peoples, or the all the main peoples of the universe, creators of the universe. And uh, in that, uh, Sh- Shiva had Shiva and Brahma ji was sitting. And when Daksha came, he was very effulgent. Uh, fire God Indra all were there. and when daksha came uh, shiva and brahma ji didn't stand did not stand uh, or paying a respect kind of others all stood seeing his effulgence including fire god as well as indra so what happened is daksha could not tolerate this and uh, he could he could understand that brahma ji of course his father but shiva ji was uh, his son in law Uh, married to sati who sati the very term is epitome of uh, chastity uh, he was uh, and he uh, how he felt ba- uh, very offended shiva shiva ji is, uh, is not uh, paying respect this the same thought went on his mind so trust so here i will say i use the uh, t for trust daksha should have trusted the intention of shiva that he didn't have any malevolent intention to insult or disrespect uh, daksha he he in one of the uh, later verses he says to uh, sat, uh, sati that i am always engaged in offering obeisances to lord vasudeva uh, that is 4.3.23 ಬೇರೆ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸತ್ವಂ ವಿಶುದ್ಧಂ ವಸುದೇವ ಶಬ್ದಿತಂ ಯದಿಯತೆ ತತ್ ಪ್ರಪುಮಾನ್ ಅಪವರ್ತ ಸತ್ವೆ ಚ ತಸ್ಮಿನ್ ಭಗವಾನ್ ವಸುದೇವೋ ಹೇ ಅದೋಕ್ಷ ಜೋ ಮೇ ನಮಃ ಸವಿದಿಯತೆ 
so he had he had his this vision that uh, uh, shivji uh, was in france and not deliberately trying to uh, disrespect me uh, the this uh, the very ugly scene would have been avoided then oh i uh, used it for offering oneself in service had had daksha uh, not taken this as offense but he had thought that yeah he is my he is married to my daughter let him take the lead and let him uh, be in his meditative pose i will offer and carry on the yagna matlab i will be a part of the yagna and uh, be instrument in making it a very uh, wonderful uh, function he avoided that he could have peacefully continued with purpose for which he had come that is the yagna which is performed for the purpose of pleasure of the lord vasudev he should have thought that let me offer my services to make the agnya better which he didn't do here we can see that sati she uh, afterwards when she comes for the second uh, vajpay agnya uh, which was uh, and braspati swa that time she saw that uh, uh, this uh, her husband was not invited in that uh, function in that sacrifice and he was others all were there and the purpose of the very agnya is to give uh, pleasure to the lord and in that that vaishna main param vaishna is not there she she just could not tolerate it because it is an offense to a great vaishnava she at that time offered her body you know like because uh, she uh, because if she, uh, she if she uh, takes this offense it is wrong because a vaishnava is been offended but if she uh, if she kills daksha then that will cause a harm to the great vaishnava shivaji that he has used his wife to uh, kill uh, or to avenge the the insult uh, which what happened to shivaji so there she offers her own body so that she wanted to get rid of that uh, bodily relation as dakshayani dakshayani so here offer one self in service she uh, had he offered his service the ugly scene would have been avoided then next i use this l for love daksha was sati was referred to as the by daksha as duhitra vatsala means one who loves his daughter very he was very fond of his daughter in spite of this this very uh, title being given he did not show any respect for his daughter and when she was uh, in she, she was going to give her body he did not have any even a tiger or a lion uh, loves his cub so much hmm? he did not even have the pinch of uh, what do you call love at that time seeing his own daughter getting immolated so here that the love was lost in anger when expectations was on its peak that is he, he was only blind for his own uh, respect not been given love for the supreme here i will say that uh, love for the supreme god is the topmost See the agnya after the what happened after the shivji when he got angry at the I mean not angry when he didn't want the further counter curses to happen and the curse uh, being extended to Lord uh, Janardana he walked out of the assembly after the uh, daksha having curse he walked out of and showing the love for supreme personality of Godhead. So the agnya continued after that the agnya continued without shivji or uh, daksha. who were the demigods uh, there a beautiful purport is written uh, in the purport a beautiful uh, we should respect and obey the laws of government but need not bribe the government i found this is a per, very good uh, personal application we must we must uh, respect the supreme personality of godhead but the demigods we should worship not worship we should Uh, give all the prime importance to uh, vishnu agnya purusha and demigod worship is not that important that is what is showing here because they in spite of the absence of shivji and daksha the uh, yagna sacrifice continued for 1000 years 
So for us, personal application here is that love for Supreme God is the topmost. Now next, I put that E. E is for empower, empowerment. Daksha could have thought, uh, let my son-in-law Shivji take the better portion as he is Param Vaishnava. His pride and bodily consciousness that is bereft of Krishna conscience led to his abusive nature, revealing his anartha, that is his envy came out. Though hidden nicely in the garb of opulence, when he came to the assembly, his effulgence, by his effulgence, the entire room, all the assembled people had stood up. But inside him, there was this anartha of envy. Had, had he empowered, had he, that, because it's all connected. When there is no love, there is no empowerment. But we can see from the uh, Shivji's, uh, Lord Shiva's nature, when Sati, she wanted to go to the sacrifice of her father, where uh, she was not invited. Though she, uh, Lord Shiva told her many reasons for not, not to go to that place, she, on seeing that she wanted to go, he knew either way she will be in trouble. But he, and for, out of love, he empowered her, and she went along with all the uh, all the um, disciples or other uh, Nandishwara and all, uh, they were, she went with them. So here we can see that how love should empower. Here Shivji had great respect and love for uh, Sati, uh, Mother Sati. So she, she, he allowed her, he empowered her and she, she went. Then next is I put here respect. Daksha didn't have respect. He should have had respect for his father. If he had respect for his father, who was the main person, creator of the universe, he is assembled there, the Brahmanas are assembled there, his daughter, his son-in-law, and his own, his responsible position as a demigod. Had he remembered that, he, this incident would not have happened. He getting so angry and cursing and all that would have been avoided. Here, what we see is, uh, he he had out of his false ego. He was just thinking about his own his own uh, insult. He, what what he felt it was an insult, that and nothing else. Then next, I put here accommodative nature. Shivji could uh, Daksha could have been more accommodative by just. I'm just thinking that, yeah, she, uh, he is a Param Vaishnava. He's my uh, daughter's husband. Let, let him take the place and let this event happen in a nice way rather than me taking this as an insult. He could have been uh, much more accommodative in that scene and avoided that negative uh, scene. Now, negative emotions. And I put for negative emotions. One just one one simple incident of Shivji not uh, standing up, uh, paying uh, respect to Daksha made his uh, made all the emotions uh, negative emotions pile up. And what happened is uh, he 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 out of all this piled up emotions he uh, abused Shivji to such an extent that next. See, I use it. He started cursing Shiva. See, is used for cursing. He cursed Shiva. In spite of the opposition of the assembly leaders, Daksha curses Shiva. Lord Shiva, the lowest of all Devi gods, should not have a share in the sacrificial obl oblation. And he left. So here, he, in spite of the opposition in the assembly, he, he curses. He forgot his position. He forgot the assembly and what was the purpose of the uh, assembly. He just cursed, which is which is improper on his he on his part. His curse, however, became a blessing, being a great to Shivji because he being a great Vaishnava, it is not befitting for him to share the fruits of the sacrifices along with other demigods. For him, it was a boon in disguise. Points to note: Shivji did not react. Shivji's followers, Nandi, counter curse, infected by anger, curse Daksha and all the Brahmanas who had tolerated Daksha's cursing Shiva. 
uh, Nandi started saying that they will be bereft of cursing Shiva. They will be bereft of knowledge, lead pretentious householder life, have a goat head, lose discrimination, continue in samskara. Samsara. He failed to follow Shiva. He could have Nandi also could have actually uh, followed his master because when the mas uh, master is sitting silent, the servant or the disciple need not talk like Mariada um, Vitikrama. Like we should not do that. But here it is. It, it it can be said that he was right because he should not be taking uh, offense to his master. So here we can justify it. Like yes, he what he did was correct. Bhrugu counter curse Shiva's followers, and that it went on an ugly scene. He, Shivji, afterwards left basically because he felt that this abuse will go, this curses and counter curses will go on, and finally it will uh, it will reach Lord Janardana. So that is a point when Shivji moved out. He just walked out, both Tandi and Bhugu, from and uh, avo means avoiding a scene wherein both of them will start again the curses and counter curses. Shiva is exemplified, uh, exemplified, exemplified the quality of tolerance in provoking situation. Now here, envy. Finally, uh, bereft of toler, trust, offer of the service, love, empowerment, respect, accommodative nature, negative emotions, curse. Finally, what has come out is the envious nature of Daksha has come out. That is a true nature. In times of the distress, we our uh, uh, our, our true nature comes out. Actions will speak better than the words. Words out of envy, covering is ignorance. You know, he he, he, he to the assembled uh, in order to cover his um, his nature, he told the assembly that Shivji, Shivji, Shiva, Lord Shiva is uh, Markata Lochan. He like in order to cover uh, uh, his uh, his uh, envious nature, he went on telling, uh, finding fault in Shiva, and he went on saying all those uh, abusive languages, though Shivji is very faultless, faultless, and spotless also. Now, why, why this envy has come in him? Because false ego leads to envy. This is a nice uh, statement there in the purport I read. False ego leads to envy, and I felt it is really true, because when we are full of ego, it will lead, we don't like other person being better than uh, oneself. So Daksha exhibited this quality and that envious nature came out. Now, Daksha was materially powerful of Shiva's higher person. Shiva not standing up was only the final manifestation of his envy. Hare Krishna. Now, now, now I I am using again acronyms for uh, anger. Here I am using. Adarshi, time ho gaya. Twenty minutes ho gaya. Krishna. Okay, okay. One minute. One, two minutes, okay. please wrap up. Yeah, here, here A, I'm using for atmosphere. The atmosphere was con uh, conducive for adharma. Neglect, code of conduct, atmosphere uh, atmosphere gave was conducive for adharma. Neglect of code of conduct, Shastra's relationship was gone. Garbage, his mind was full of negative emotions and enmity. He could have, he could have uh, responded rather than reacted to the situation. He reacted to the situation and he... Curse. So now personal application. So in your uh, tolerance, personal application, one should not tolerate or, uh, offense against Vishnu or Vaishnavas. Lord Chaitanya's anger, though he always uh, told that you should be humble, you should be uh, but he expressed his anger when uh, Nithyanand was uh, hurt by Nithyanand Prabhu was hurt by Jagai and Madai. Now, how to uh, avoid anger? Use this uh, acronyms. You should trust. You should, if you have trust, if you offer service, if you love, if you empower, respect, accommodate, all this, uh, avoid harsh peace. One can always avoid anger. And how to tolerance? Tolerance, how to personal application for tolerance? A Vaishnava is always tolerant. 
पर्सनल एप्लीकेशन फॉर द गा वन हु इज ऑनेस्ट मे बी फेथफुल टू द गवर्नमेंट बट ही डज नॉट नीड टू बी टू ब्राइट द गवर्नमेंट रेस्पेक्ट डेमी गॉड्स बट वर्शिप एंड प्लीज सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड दैट इज द पर्सनल एप्लीकेशन लॉर्ड से इज मत भक्ता पूजे अभ्यादिका अभ्यादिका the worship of my devotee is better than worship of me dasa nu dasa if we apply this principle our life will be uh, we can practice tolerance one who has developed love for vishnu should respect vaishnavas who can practice tolerance one one in the mode of goodness only so we should be as personal for personal application we should all sadhakas be in the mode of goodness there may be many impediments in our sadhana but with determination we can Uh, like you can see the example of shivji when he walked out peacefully and he practiced his sadhana Shiv, shivji says that the punishment was for correction of daksha not for uh, avenging uh, his uh, in, uh, his behavior is uh, taking revenge against so we should also accept criticisms or corrections from uh, seniors in the right spirit thinking that they showered mercy by correcting me uh, hari krishna I think time over, or do I have time? Hare Krishna. When devotees ask, ask when when devotees okay, ask okay, questions, Krishna, in response, Prabhuji. you can add your points. No problem. No problem. It's okay, Hare Krishna. Yeah, devotees, please. Hare Krishna. धन्यवाद थैंक यू फॉर वेरी नाइस प्रेजेंटेशन विद द एक्रोनिम एंड ऑल मतजी मतजी आई वाज जस्ट थिंकिंग दैट इट इज नॉट दैट ओनली वी मूव अराउंड इन द डिवोटी कम्युनिटी कम्युनिटी सो व्हेन वी आर मूविंग अराउंड इन द मटेरियल वर्ल्ड वी डू कम अक्रॉस सो मेनी मटेरियल पीपल एंड सो मेनी प्रोवोकिंग सिचुएशन सो एट दैट टाइम वेदर ऑलवेज द टॉलरेंस शुड बी अप्लाइड और sometimes uh, we do need to react also uh, how you see this in whatever perspective of whatever discussion we are hari krishna mata ji a nice question uh, from my personal experience uh, i always think it is better to not to react you know like time will show the correct way and time will give the person the correct punishment or whatever and in front of us only it will happen uh, this is my faith and it has always happened to me my personal experience i'm saying because when your silence at many a times speaks more than you know your action because we don't have if we practice because uh, when uh, from the childhood we were taught that when you get up you have to say do the andavar to the ground and say father's uh, persons uh, Bhumi, like we have to pray to the Mother Earth, remembering that how tolerant is she. So, like outside world also, you don't have to react. I think because time will like show the correct thing to that person also, and that person will if we are if your tolerance is so strong, uh, they that the other person will realize that he had he or she had done a mistake. Definitely, this is my personal. experience and my personal you know i don't know if i am wrong or right many times maybe i am wrong but uh, i i think this is the correct approach and especially now as vaishnavas because when we put tilak and kanti we should be seen as okay thank yes, you we need a high level of tolerance while moving around in the outside world because even if we and we i think we should not be feeling that the reaction should come to that person because exactly then, even though we uh, we may have not reacted to the situation but then we will be having that hankering that when that person is having going to have his reaction let me see that so that passive kind of a thing hankering will be there so it will be better just leave uh, to krishna that as we did exactly today. so Faith whatever in the lord yeah so whatever reaction is going to come due to his karma it will come so we'll just leaving man move around um, with our, on our path yeah thank you so much hari krishna thank you mata ji any other devotee <clears throat> hari 
Thank you, Mataji, for making a nice presentation. You went through many details. You for each and every acronym, each and every word. You kind of uh, went through analytical study of the personality, event, response, action, and you also said pra practical application, personal application, this, that, so many things. Very systematic you made. Thank you very much for selecting this topic. <clears throat> all of you have taken such kind of topics, setting up high standards, hearing all these topics, feeling fearful. <laughs> Correction. Thank you very much. Thank you. So, and our pranam to everybody. Uh, Thank you so much. Uh, now, last presentation for today, our Pradeep Nayaru. Please. One minute, Prabhuji. You can stop screen sharing, Mataji. Or probably you want to use same device. Hey, I hope I'm audible. Ah, yes, Prabhu, you're audible. Hare Krishna, Om Ajnana Timiranda Sia Jana Jana Shalakya Chakshur and Militam Yena Tasme Sri Guru Vena Ma Sri Chaitanya Mano Vishnam Sathakam Yena Bhutle Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadadika Mandeham Sri Guru Sri Uta Padakadamayam Sri Guru Shanshanam Sri Guru Pam Sajjatam Sadhana Raghunathan Tam Sandhiji Sadhvitam Sadhutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Deham Sri Radha Krishna Pada Sayagana Vita Sri Vishakam Ma Vishnu Pada Krishna Prishtaya Bhutle Sri Mathe Bhakti Vedan Swami Nath Namani Namaste Sarsri Deve Kaurvani Kichami Vedishesh Shunivadi Bhashati Vishtami Kaya Vacha Kalpa Kripya Sai Kripa Sindhu Vecha Patitana Bhavani Bhya Vishnu Vyo Namo Vama Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Vedanta Sri Vasadi Kaur Hare Krishna So Prabhu Ji Sri Krishna I being the last, I think I got the least time also. Well, and, and in any case, uh, I, I don't think I've prepared much. So whatever I'm saying is, uh, I don't know, the last one or two hours rush that I have done. And I, I don't know how much I'll be able to, uh, you know, uh, perform here. Um, but of course, uh, Mataji's help was there. so. That's how whatever I'm presenting probably is because of that. So uh, hearing is the key is my topic. And, uh, you know, hearing actually starts off from, uh, I would say anybody for anybody in the morning itself. When we are fast asleep, Ear is one particular organ which is not asleep. All other organs are asleep. And once the alarm bell rings, our ears receive and the voice is passed on to the other organs and we are awake. Our scriptures say we need to just give one oral reception and we can simply cross over the ocean of sansara with it. Right from childhood, we have heard stories and grown up which gave us moral values. So hearing is not new to us at all. In Bhagavad Gita, uh, we know that Lord Krishna, before beginning the Bhakti Yoga in chapter 7, had told Arjuna, touch Shrunu. And we also heard, lastly, when after uh, the transformation, in 18.73, we heard Karishya Vachanam Tava from Arjuna also. So that powerful is hearing in 45 minutes, 
the entire life changes for arjuna and you know the nine process of bhakti also starts with shravanam the entire bhagavatam a process is a process of hearing right from parikshit maharaj to the sages of naimisharanya in canto 4 the narration is between vidura and maitre muni all this is hearing 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 let us see how some of the devotees heard from other devotees every action begins from hearing this can you know actually unveil the stories of admired personalities beginning from lord shiva suniti druva narada anga prithu prachetas and they have all showed extraordinary examples of devotional uh, service we can learn about the unfavorable attitudes in devotional service from the mistakes of characters like daksha surichi vena indra prachina bari etc the positive transformation undergone by many of the personalities mainly due to the intervention of devotees add to the glory of bhakti this canto has prayers offered by devotees to lord by druva rudra geeta uh and the practices in this canto uh, rudra geeta of course by shiva and this this canto discloses to the readers the foremost aspiration of a devotee is to hear krishna katha in association of other devotees so uh, this uh, canto also gives examples of uh, ladies like uh, suniti anasuya sati archi why why there be who were devotees to their husband in faith in full faith the positive impact of hearing we can see the lord shiva heard brahma ji's request to take his share from the sacrifice and restore life to daksha i mean that was a perfect example where uh, you know after he being humiliated so much brahma ji's request was taken and uh, by shiva and you know he adhered to what brahma ji had to say and also if we were to look at some negative impact uh, not hearing to the words of lord shiva led to sati giving up her body and the entire ugly scene of envy pride curse counter curse etc which happened uh, now some uh, some of the other Uh, things that we have to look at other uh, words by surichi made kshatriya blood in druva boil and not to accept insult and then his mother's positive advice pacified his negative feelings and directed him to worship the supreme lord narada's timely intervention in the forest where druva went you know Dhruva Maharaj had to perform severe austerities and attain the highest position in the world when he was just five years old. Here, the negative remarks of Surichi helped him to search for the absolute truth. Although being a great devotee after his father's retirement, being a king when he heard of his brother Uttama's Uttama's uh, death, why a yaksha? Uh, he became very angry and annihilated. all the yakshas and again at that time you know he it was basically swayambhu manu who kind of intervened and stopped this on uh, slot uh, on slot and he also listened to swayambhu manu so that's again uh, another way of you know hearing to swayambhu manu and giving up that uh, uh, the rage and finally also sought blessings from puvera the king of uh, the yakshas the he he also uh, you know then ruled the uh, the place for almost 36 years 36000 years and retired and ascended to the lord's abode along with his great mother suniti in the same bo- body that is to be noted and again these are all because he was able to hear the words from narada 
So hearing, he is the key to the position. Narada had recited some verses of glorifications about Dhruva at the sacrifice of the Prachetas. Uh, now Vidra wanted to know about the, uh, the Prachetas, their lineage, lineage, their sacrifice, instructions, etc. on Nardi and the Prachetas, scriptures concerning service to the Lord. They being born in Dhruva's dynasty. Maitreya starts describing the descendants of Dhruva Maharaj for that purpose. Then the story of Anga, Vena, Anga leaves home because of his useless son, though born out of sacrifice. And then the churning of uh, Anga's legs where Bahuka was born. And then finally the churning of the arms where Prithu Maharaj was and Archie, uh, were, you know, were born. And that was from the father's lineage. So Prithu Maharaj received a lot of gifts from the demigods and Mother Earth and, you know, and Earth, uh, you know, milked Mother Earth uh, for people in his uh, time were starving and, you know, in, in that place. And uh, in and the hundredth sacrifice uh, of King Prithu was stopped by uh, uh, our Indra. And again, uh, the Lord had to intervene and, uh, you know, he had to give advice to Prithu Maharaj and Prithu Maharaj also heard and understood that, okay, it has to be stopped. So all this, uh, uh, and then of course, the uh, uh, Prachinabari, the Prachetas hearing uh, from Lord Shiva, all these are actually unfolding different types of, uh, you know, stories, which actually helps people to hear and take advice from people for the betterment of uh, you know, if everyone at large. Uh, I have, uh, sorry, I think. Uh, okay, I have then uh, wanting, I was wanting to quote some of those uh, shlokas, which were uh, from Dhruva Maharaj, which he hears from his mother. Maitri uh, Vacha, Evam Sanjal Pitam Matur, Akarnyartha Gamam Vacha. Sanyam yat manamat manam nishkar mapitu purat. The great sage Maitreya continued the instruction of Dhruva Maharaj, um, Maharaj Mother Suniti as actually meant for fulfilling his desired objective. Therefore, after deliberate consideration and with intelligence and fixed determination, he left his father's house. The next one is uh, where he hears from uh, Nardamuni and he says that. Uh, you know, my dear Lord Nardaji, for a person whose heart is disturbed by the material conditions of happiness and distress, whatever you have so kindly explained for attainment of peace of mind is certainly a very good instruction. But as far as I am concerned, I am covered by ignorance and this kind of philosophy does not touch my heart. So there also he hears, but then he chooses a way out from it. So that's something again, uh, you know, we would like to mention here. Then Sanat Kumara, uh, you know, we, we have all heard from, uh, uh, you know, Sanat, uh, Prithumaraj is hearing from Sanat Kumara. Now here also Prithumaraj praises uh, Sanat Kumara and, you know, uh, Sanat Kumara, the best of celebrates after hearing the all the questions from Prithumaraj, how he was, you know, which was meaningful, appropriate, full of precise words and very sweet to hear. So that is something which I think, uh, you know, we need to understand how people hear from other devotees. So sweet to hear, smiled with full satisfaction and began to speak as follows. So it's, uh, we've all heard, uh, you know, Kumara's telling Prutumara. So uh, here is something where Prutumaraj is glorified uh, after hearing all the questions. Then uh, is the Kumara's where he, co I mean, they quote, the devotee should gradually increase the culture of devotional service by constant hearing of transcendental qualities of the Supreme Personality of God. These pastimes are like ornamental, ornamental decorations on the ears of the devotees. By rendering devotional service and transcending the material qualities, one can easily be fixed in transcendence in the Supreme Personality of God. So here again, he, he, they are giving a constant hearing of transcendental qualities of Supreme Personality is what uh, they're talking about, which again talks about how important hearing is. And 
Shiva addressing to the Prachetas, uh, finally, you know, when it talks about, uh, you know, uh, the devotee who rises early in the morning with folded hands, chants these prayers sung by Lord Shiva and gives facility to others to hear them, certainly becomes free of all bondage to fruitive activities. It's like sort of a Falashruti uh, after the Rudra Gita. So these are all uh, pearls of wisdom from different, uh, uh, you know, inspiring personalities of Bhagavatam, which uh, helps uh, common men like us uh, and the other devotees uh, uh, across uh, in devotional service to the Lord. And, uh, you know, it is very important that we all start with hearing. And hearing is important. Hearing from a wrong person is like poison, uh, poisoned milk, uh, which is touched by the snake. So it's like that also. So importance of right persons, uh, you know, to hear from is very much important. Uh, I think uh, I've more or less covered almost everything. What I had, uh, of course, uh, had. Another, I think this is uh, one of the best, uh, I would say. So, uh, where the uh, so not this one. <coughs> so, uh, I mean, I was talking about one of those, uh, you know, in, in when the Lord actually talks to Prithumaraj and Prithumaraj says that you know he doesn't want any other uh, uh, any other uh, benediction, but he only wants uh, millions of ears uh, to listen to maximum uh, you know Lord's Krishna Katha or Lord's Kathas uh, is something which is uh, you know very close to heart and I think hearing is one of the the key key element for devotional service. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Hare Krishna, thank you, Prabhu. Uh, devotees, please. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Um, Dhanand Pranam, this is Brajatika here. Can you hear me? Dhanand Pranam. Yes, Prabhuji. Yeah, so Prabhuji, you uh, in fact uh, completely covered the whole canto and it was amazing uh, how you uh, gave importance to hearing. I just wanted to ask you, Prabhuji, that uh, is hearing equivalent to reading? Because I'm more inclined to, I mean, again, if somebody is more inclined to hearing and not reading and uh, other way around also. So is, the, is these two things uh, equivalent? My uh, personal experience is that uh, I give a lot of importance to hearing than reading because I may be lazy. So reading uh, doesn't come equal for me, at least as a person. But of course, uh, reading is important because he, he, uh, you know, hearing is one thing. Uh, uh, you know, you, you, you have the, suppose you hear something and if you want to know more about it, then you actually have to read. And another aspect is that, you know, I was mentioning about uh, ear doesn't sleep. Eyes has to sleep. So I think if you look at that uh, way that, you know, if the lights are not there, you can't read. But if you yeah. can hear something uh, happening or the Krishna Katha, if it is going on, I think uh, that way you can hear and be, uh, you know, you can be kind of uh, hearing all the time. And there is no lead for ears right eyes have a lid there are eyelids for all of us but ears do not have any lid so it doesn't close us i hope uh, i don't know this is my little understanding of the subject so convenient way of escaping Hare Krishna. <laughs> can i add Prabhuji? yes yes yeah, please, yes please. Mataji, please yeah, Prabhuji, in um, one or two places I've uh, read, like Sri Prabhupada has mentioned that hearing is equal to reading because 
when you are reading something you are hearing the author whatever he has said so um, both are equally important and they are like means if somebody is reading more it is like hearing also or somebody is had more attraction for hearing then it is same like reading both way it can but of course while reading we can make some notes and make some you know underline things like that which can't be done while hearing correct so, correct yeah. yeah thank you thank you thank you ma'am okay uh, yes ma'am just please go ahead go ahead go ahead um thank you prabhu ji for the class and uh, i just question is hearing personally from a devotee same uh, would be put on the same level as hearing online from the same person sorry can you come again with the question okay. mataji like Half, uh, what is the difference between offline and online oh there is a lot online. of difference there is a lot of okay. difference mataji my again my personal uh, experience i would say i mean what we were hearing you know from prabhu ji here i mean i can say that in front of him also uh you know you get disturbed here while we are sitting and uh, uh, hearing from online but when we go to the temple it's like undivided attention and uh, you know totally inspired by him and you know we kind of uh, keep all our uh, uh, you know unnecessary uh, mind games out of question in that classroom so i always believed that you know hearing offline and uh, you know sitting in front of the person uh, is the best okay but uh, suppose a person doesn't get an opportunity to go to the temple and hear in person so would that be considered little less helpful in a spiritual life not really no not really not really mata ji it it also depends on the person how uh, you know receptive he is uh, at the time and uh, with the person who is speaking yeah. thank you very much prabhu thank you hari krishna hari krishna yeah one point as prabhu yes, was speaking i just remember in one of the class his grace radhika wala prabhu was mentioning to our brahmachari classes so this is from neeti shastra chanakya has written he said so a student learns 25% from uh, by hearing from guru teacher in whatever mm-hmm. way you can put and 25% by swadhyay by doing homework okay class mein sunne ke baad ghar pe aake homework karna padta hai yes <laughs> that that gives 25% of understanding of the subject matter <laughs> and then 25% more understanding comes from mutual discussion among the class children chernik and the last 25% understanding comes by leading a life of application that comes that keeps that keeps coming the last 25% keep coming throughout the life till the end of the last breath so when a student goes to gurukul he is supposed to be gaining knowledge up to 75% having come home leading his life gains the remaining 25% mm. so as we always say that hearing means hearing plus application yes so that application includes reading application includes putting into day to day activities and so many other things writing so, exams also ha <laughs> uh, writing exams not just writing exams writing exams in time yes <laughs> all these things include in that otherwise just hearing and not doing anything about it is as good as not hearing so it is like that so so but anyway thank you very much for choosing this what is this you chose a topic of hearing you made us hear you did not show yourself no no slides no no audio no no video only only audio prabhu ji i can show myself now <laughs> okay okay thank you thank you <laughs> thank you very much so thank you very much to all the devotees for uh, putting efforts to make this uh, presentations vinit prabhu i don't know what happened he has kind of withdrew himself kurmangani va sarvasha is not he does not want to 
open up and express his uh, <laughs> All Mahabharata yeah. assembly, I cannot speak anything, bro. Sorry. You are pulling our legs, or uh, what? No, bro. Yeah, I was not here, able to. Here, here. None of us are, none of us are on that level. So we are all working in progress. We all need to help each other, sharing our understanding with each other. Nothing like that. Yeah. So thank you very much for joining. So few things are few announcements. Uh, some devotees are writing exams and sending uh, answer sheets. Request all other devotees also. Uh, by next Friday night, if all of you submit your pending assignments, then I'll take next Saturday class. Otherwise, I will not take class. It's up to you. You want the class or not? My two grand tests are less. So, uh... If by giving one grand test, if I'm coming up to 65%, is it okay if I don't give the two? Because in one week, <laughs> writing grand test is difficult. Not difficult. We, cup cup syllabus complete how many days have been? How many days have been pending, pending, pending? How many days have been? See, I don't know. You don't have to give me any reason. So whatever you want to do, do the needful. All of you should complete by next Friday evening so that I can prepare and uh, come for the class next Saturday. Afternoon. Otherwise, Hare Krishna. Yes, 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 Prabhuji. We'll do it. Yeah. Hare Thank Krishna. you very much. Ah, yes, Mataji. Prabhuji, uh, one doubt. Like Prabhuji, OBTs can be, means if we, sub, if we submit one or two and one or two are remaining, can we be submitted hmm. after the next canto starts? Because uh, all the four OBTs thoda difficult ho jata in one week like this. See if possible, right? Like that only. If everyone starts asking for excuses, then nothing will happen. Yeah, if you want one more week, already one month okay. I'm coming to start with the fifth canto. So, yeah, yeah, then, then, start then, then complete fourth okay. canto, then complete fourth canto. Prabhuji, we'll, uh, we'll write the necessary uh, whatever is required, but our office can do start. Yeah, do, do the needful. If you are aiming yeah. at pass marks, no problem. 65, 70, if you get, that is fine. Remaining, you can leave. But yeah. writing all the things would help you. So we are mm -hmm. not studying just for uh, giving exams. We are studying mm -hmm. to internalize the teachings of Yeah, that, that, that should yeah. also be there. Yes. Not just for certificate. Try our best, okay. but... Uh, Mm -hmm. Prabhuji, one humble request. I know you are also in hurry. Like from next canto, Prabhuji, please give OBTs thoda jaldi so that you know in between whenever we have time, we can you know, complete it. Itna, because end okay. mein na, end mein end mein kitha, to na, me to three months ago, part one ka bhi tha na, Prabhuji, part one, part two, fir art tha likhne ka total. No, no, part one ka pehle diya tha, part one, part two add karke diya tha, part one to kab ka diya tha? वो बहुत मैंने एक डेढ़ साल पहले किया था अच्छा यू हैव गिवन इट अर्लियर पार्ट 1 हां पार्ट 1 आई ऑलरेडी शेयर्ड एंड एडेड पार्ट 2 आल्सो टू दैट एंड देन शेयर्ड पार्ट 1 पार्ट 2 कंबाइन टुगेदर ओके ओके सॉरी थैंक यू नो प्रॉब्लम हरे कृष्णा धन्यवाद प्रणाम थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर जॉइनिंग वी आर क्लोजिंग फॉर टुडे हरे कृष्णा के नाम हरे कृष्णा प्रभु जी थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू वेरी मच जी धन्यवाद प्रणाम सीम्स टू बी कोल्ड देयर